Thank you for joining us on the news on NCA International. I'm Lami Ali. Precious Ozoimena is the sign language interpreter, and these are the leading stories. Rwanda announces a free visa for all Africans. Dozens killed in fire at Iranian Drug Rehabilitation Center. As environmental issues become clearer, the world marks day of biosphere reserves. <music> President Bola Tinubu has tasked members of his cabinet to redouble their efforts towards enhancing the development of Nigeria. He gave the charge while closing the three-day retreat organized for government functionaries. The president says it is through collective efforts that Nigeria can overcome the challenges of poverty and place the country on the pedestal of progress. Be ready to forget about the rest of the world. But I say Nigeria. Let's go out there. Let's bond together. And make sure our country is fully recovered from elvantiasis. Now, more African countries are making entry for Africans visa-free. The latest is Rwanda after President Paul Kagame announced that entry by all Africans into Rwanda is henceforth visa-free. Kolo Mohamed has the details. Announced the abolition of visa requirements for all Africans willing to visit Rwanda. President Kigami spoke in Kigali, where he pitched the potential of Africa as a unified tourism destination for a continent that still relies on 60% of its tourism from outside Africa, according to data from the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. He said any African can get on a plane to Rwanda whenever they wish and they will not pay a thing to gain entry into the country. He says Africa should not lose sight of the continental market, which is that Africans are the future of global tourism as its middle class will continue to grow at a fast pace in decades to come. Other countries that are visa requirements free for all Africans include the Gambia, Benin Republic and Seychelles. Similarly, owing to Pan-Africa movement in relation to Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, Kenya has also announced visa-free requirements into its country for all Africans. We are now moving in the direction of eliminating visas amongst ourselves. Let me say this. As Kenya, by the end of this year, no African will be required to have a visa to come to Kenya. In this regard, experts believe economy and business will triumph in all parts of the continent and beyond going forward. Kolo Mohamed, NT News. Now, migration into Europe has continued to give the EU cause for deep concern as the number of illegal migrants continues to rise. The worry is that economic, political and social forecasts cannot be accurate. Again, Kolo Mohamed tells us more. Armed police officers wave cars off the motorway going from Poland to Germany. They are searching for human smugglers and their desperate cargo. This move is the latest by the government of Germany to show it is getting a grip on rising levels of irregular migration. Altenberg is a small town in Saxony, right by Czech Republic. The local mayor here, Markus Weisenberg, says 
In this area alone, smugglers drop off people daily. New arrivals put a strain on services as well as the people. Sometimes diseases are reported with the arrival of people dropped off by the smugglers. Germany remains the top destination for asylum seekers. Federal police say the number of people found getting entry into Germany illegally in September alone is 21,363, the highest monthly figure since early 2016. Authorities say most smuggled migrants are from either Africa or the Middle East. Now that the roads are jump packed by security checks, most smugglers smuggle their cargo through the sea, which is considered even more dangerous. A lot in this big sea, it's not easy, it's uh, only God. Because uh, when we are coming, even our boat get broke inside and there was uh, water leaking inside our boats. Going forward, Germany has suggested stiffer penalties for arrested smugglers. Colom Hamad, NTA News. At least 32 people have been killed in a fire that tore through a drug rehabilitation center in northern Iran. Authorities have said the blaze erupted early hours of Friday in Langarud, a city in the Caspian Sea province of Gilan, north of Tehran. Ismail Sadegi, a provincial chief justice, told local media that 16 others were taken to hospital. Iran imposes the death penalty on repeat drug smugglers and dealers, but runs a series of rehab programs for addicts. The cause of the fire was not immediately clear, but Mr. Sadegi said an investigation was underway. The center accommodates up to 40 people. Today is International Day for Biosphere Reserves and with each year passing by, the urgency of tackling environmental issues becomes clearer with planet Earth becoming increasingly in danger. The International Day for Biosphere Reserves is an invitation to take inspiration from the solutions already implemented in these spaces to build genuinely sustainable development everywhere with full respect for nature and for the living world. Today's biodiversity crisis stems from the crisis in our relationship with nature, with other species in the living world. Indeed, human activities are responsible for the alteration of 75% of Earth's ecosystems, 40% of the marine environment, and 50% of water courses. A message from Audrey Azoulay, Director General of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, on this day, 3rd of November 2023, called for an improved relationship between man and his environments, protecting of the ecosystem services, biodiversity conservation and restoration. Mission is now. Crisis also create opportunities the opportunity to change how we see our relationships with nature, with each other, and with the Earth. We know that there is no future for business as usual. We need a new normal for biodiversity. The day was proclaimed by the UNESCO General Conference in its 41st session in 2021, emphasizing the relationship between man, nature, and other living beings needs a radical rethink in order to design and create a truly shared world. Bass for Reserves have shown that it is possible to live in this world while also establishing a sustainable and harmonious relationship with nature. Now, right here to discuss issues relating to the International Day for Biosphere Reserves is Abu Enajo Steven, the National Network Coordinator, Climate and Sustainable Development Network. Mr. Enajo, thank you for coming to our studios. Thank you for having me. All right. I want to begin with by asking you this. A layman watching us right now may want to know what the term biosphere means. And then we also want you to talk us through the International Day for Biosphere Reserves and what it is all about. All right. Thank you. Uh, biosphere 
uh, to a layman is anywhere life exists. For example, when you go beneath the ground, there are living organisms there. At the root of a tree, there are living organisms. In the water body, be it marine and fresh water, there are living things there. Uh, even down to the valley and top mountains, you have living things, you have living organisms there. And these are places that are classified as biosphere. Now, the term biosphere reserve, this came to be because it was discovered that as the population of humans continued to increase, uh, we carry out a number of activities that began to endanger other species. Uh, this, of course, have been compounded by the impact of climate change. And then we discover that a number of living things, a number of these biological you know, animals begin to go extinct. Now the idea came on how to conserve this biodiversity. And then they now began to create what we call this biosphere reserve. And this is uh, being marked annually uh, in order to create awareness on the need to preserve the biodiversity, on the need to, for humans to live in a friendly manner with their environment. And then we discover that if this is not done in good time, it may lead to a loss of biodiversity. And then we mark this particular day every year to create awareness uh, for people living, you know, in, in any environment to live friendly with other uh, biodiversity and to create a sustainable environment for the future and even for the present generation. Thank you. All right. Now give us your opinion about the current relationship between man and nature with extreme weather events constituting great damage to the world right now as we live in it. Thank you. Uh, currently, we discover that the relationship uh, between human and their environment are not actually friendly enough. And this has further been exacerbated by the impact of climate change. For example, in places like uh, the Lake Chad and other river uh, water bodies, you discover that the, 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 this water body continues to shrink. And in the process, humans living close to this water that depend on them for their livelihood continue to uh, over, over carry out their activities like fishing. And then this leads to uh, a loss of a whole lot of biodiversity. Now, even people living close to some forest that, uh, that harbor a number of species that are not common anywhere in Africa and in the world, we discover that due to uh, the, the, the quest for man to look for their sources of livelihood, a number of activities like deforestation continue to happen. We see a kind of incessant killing of animals for food. And then this has continued to damage the environment. To, to, and now we, there is every need for us to move quickly to see how we can reconcile this relationship. And then we discover that uh, when you go to these people, they have genuine reasons why they are actually looking uh, for their food. But when we allow man to continue to overfish, when we allow man to continue to uh, degrade the forest, when we allow man to continue to go after other animals the way we are doing currently, uh, in the next future, nearest future, we may not have a, you know, other biodiversity in our environment. And this is not good at the moment. We thank you very much, Mr. Enojo, for sharing those perspectives, and we hope that man will create a harmonious relationship with nature. Yes, uh, we... We, uh, we, we, we thank you. Actually, we don't have... Uh, that's the much uh, time we have for the discussion. We thank you very much for sharing those perspectives. 
Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're watching the news on NTA International. Time now to take a break. More stories when we return. Do stay tuned. Reform may be painful, but it is what greatness and the future require. We now carry the course of reaching a future Nigeria where the abundance and fruit of the nation are fairly shared among all, not hoarded by a select and greedy few. In Nigeria, where hunger, poverty, and hardship are pushed into the shadows and ever fading past. Thank you for staying. The Directorate of Technical Aid Corps and the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NITCOM, have agreed to strengthen collaboration in order to advance the best intentions of the present administration hinge on the Renewed Hope Agenda. This was the main conversation when the Director General of DTAC, Dr. Yusuf Bubayakub, visited the Chairman and CEO of NITCOM, Abiker Dabiri Erewa, in Abuja. The DTAC Director General said the cooperation of NITCOM and DTAC was necessary to drive some of the major needs aimed at strengthening the mandates of both agencies in deepening relations with the global community through people-to-people -people collaboration, especially when it means that every deployed volunteer from DTAC automatically becomes a member of the NA nation's diaspora community. He proposed the establishment of a desk office manned by NITCOM officers who will ensure a smooth and seamless liaison between the missions and the diasporans in the bid to fully involve them in driving foreign direct investments for Nigeria. Responding, the NITCOM boss Abike Dabiri Rewa said she was optimistic that collaboration with DTAC would be in the best interest of the nation. She added that given the experience of the new DG of DTAC as a former chair of the Committee on Foreign Affairs House of Representatives, much would be expected as experience will be completely put to bear. Now the journey to cleaner and cheaper fuel is on in earnest, particularly with the inauguration of the compressed natural gas conversion site in Abuja. The leadership of the presidential CNG initiative reiterates that it is to fast-track federal government's efforts toward targeting the conversion of one million gas-powered vehicles in Nigeria by 2027. Lydia Sampson has more. All is now said for the real-time conversion of vehicles, power generators and cooking fuel to compress natural gas. Key players believe the launch of a conversion site in Abuja is a significant turning point in the country's energy revolution. This is as members of the presidential CNG initiative committed to working with reputable companies across the country to actualize the presidential mandate. For the PICNG, there is no monopoly that's going to be created. There, is no, there are no special um, suppliers, there is no special company, nobody is going to focus on one part of the country and not focus on the other part of the country. This is everybody's product and everybody's initiative. In addition to this, it is cheaper, meaning it is easier on our wallets. In addition to this, the availability it's likely to be more reliable. Stakeholders at the inauguration of the conversion site are urging Nigerians to take advantage of the initiative and harness the numerous cost-effective benefits of CNG conversion made affordable for Nigerians. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCF Aru, has revealed plans to introduce one million powered vehicle by 2027. To serve as a conversion center to all category of motorists where they will come in and convert their vehicles to CNG. 
massive advocacy, more investors and people will buy into the CNG revolution, which heralds cheaper, cleaner fuel, which is already on track to lead the nation's energy mix. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Still on energy matters, the House of Representatives is working on a legislation that will sanitize the mining sector for increased revenue generation and job creation. Aliu Tijan reports that the House Committee on Solid Minerals Development is already engaging stakeholders for inputs in the new mining law. Latest in this engagement is the meeting with Governor Abdullahi Suleh. Fuel subsidy is gone with ripple effects on the economy and the masses. But lawmakers are bent on reviewing the subsidy regime and pursuing recovery of unremitted revenues accruing to the federal government in the petroleum sector. The pre-export financing arrangement and other loan arrangement in exchange for crude will be extensively reviewed and investigated. The direct sale, direct purchase, using the crude to bring in the PMS and other value chain associated with them will also be reviewed. Meanwhile, more House committees hold inaugural sittings with assurances to enhance the health, welfare and socio-economic well-being of Nigerians across critical sectors. We are going to push and advocate that malaria drugs be subsidized. If not made free, at all government health centers. We will engage MDAs under the Federal Ministry of Innovation, Science and Technology in discussions about policies, programs and budgets needed to boost science technology innovation sector in the country. Whether it is enhancing the airport infrastructure, optimizing air traffic management or advancing Aviation safety protocol. We are committed to creating an enabling environment for the aviation industry. The census budget and census preparation, they've gone over 80 percent. So, for anyone to say that should just go by the way, it it is highly unacceptable. The various committees promise robust legislative oversight for checks and balances on the activities of government ministries, departments, and agencies. From the National Assembly, Mitaire Ikmen, NTA News. We apologize for the mix up. That story is actually that of uh, Mitaire Ikmen on the House of Representatives Committee, as it is set to carry out a comprehensive audit of the petroleum subsidy regime. Now, the federal government is determined to start the implementation of presidential steering committee plans on the Nigeria's Safe Schools Project. Secretary to the government of the Federation, George Akume, gave this indication as the National Summit on Safe Schools put together by the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps in Abuja. Dennis Temple completes the reports. These key players in the education sector gathered here to find lasting solutions to end the incessant attacks on school children across the country. Representative of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Professor Bulaji, Babatunde, Interior Minister Olubumi Tunjojo, and other stakeholders underscore the importance of education to national development and outline measures to enhance security which will ultimately improve the enrollments of students in schools. The government is resolute in its commitment to curtailing attacks on our schools and eradicating insecurity. For me, to secure our schools, we must leverage on intelligence. Because intelligence makes planning precise and it makes actions quite I first I took a step to conduct a vulnerability survey study where we commissioned some research fellows and the data revealed was so shocking. The theme of the summit is tackling and identifying threats to Nigeria's safe school projects. This meeting is very important, it's very critical. That is why the, I, the Commission of Education, make sure that I'm here, that as the, this program continues, I will be able to get the necessary uh, steps to take to ensure that this safe school project reaches Taraba. Over 300 participants, including children drawn from selected schools, attended 
the workshop in Abuja, Dennis Temple, NTN News. The leadership of the Nigerian Television Authority, NCE, says it is poised to bring in new reforms and ideas that would help stimulate better working conditions as well as compete favorably with the growing media world. Director General of the NCE, Salihu Abdul Hamid Dembus, gave the insight during an interactive session with the organization's newly elected executive members of both the Nigeria Union of Journalists and the Radio, Television and Theatre Arts Workers' Union in Abuja. Francis Udojo reports. The interactive session is mainly to introduce the management newly elected executives of the chapels of NTA, NUJ, and Ratao. It also created an avenue for the two unions to register their readiness to work with the leadership of NTA in achieving its set goals while reeling out areas they want the top management to focus on. Top on the agenda is the need for upward review of poor salary scheme, staff welfare, provisions of more buses to convey staff, as well as making available an additional clinic at the dump site of the NTA and other worker-related matters were highlighted. Whatever it is that we need to do to be able to improve our life while we are here, so that even when we are gone, we will still be able to look at NTA and then say, this place made us. Because whether we like it or not, we are have, we have giving our all to NTA. I and my team will bring in a new piece of focus into this union. Flanked by executive directors, the director general of NTA, Salihu Abduhamid Dembos, described by the newly elected union members as a go-getter, said management had already set up two main committees to handle most of the requests put forward by the unions. He said new reforms and ideas are on the way while urging the executives of both chapels to work in tandem with the organization to bring the desired change. Uh, a committee has already been set up and uh, they are going to be given one, one man, that is four weeks, within which to uh, report back. Uh, from there we will begin to implement. And uh, we are also looking at the issue of revenue generation because the chunk of what you have addressed has to do with money. While the management of NTA is making efforts to improve the general well-being of each staff, especially regarding housing, the DG urged the staff to prepare adequately for their retirement. In Abuja, Francis Sudojo, NTA News. And that does it on the news at this time on NTA International. We thank you for watching. I'm Lami Ali and Precious Ozamina has been with me for the sign language interpretation. Thank you.